small disclaimer guys I know that there is a giant glob of glue on my lashes and I now realize that that was on my lashes throughout the entire tutorial after I put the lashes on but I didn't want to scrap the tutorial because I felt like the eyeshadow still came out really pretty and really good so uh yeah sorry about the giant eyelash glue glob hey everyone welcome back to my channel so today's video is going to be an eye tutorial using the busy art mini eyeshadow palette so I picked this up at fame expo and somebody requested in the comments actually a couple of people requested in the comments a tutorial using this palette and I thought you know what that is a great idea I'm gonna do it so I have been using this on and off for the past couple of months since I bought the palette so let's see that was in June and now it's August so June July August you yeah, get the idea I've used it quite a bit um, just to give you a heads up on what this is so busy art is a brand that is known for their very prestige eyeshadows and they recently came out with little mini versions of their palettes they come in three different colors this is the cashmere palette which I was told was for blondes <laughs> whatever I think any hair color can wear any eyeshadow that they want but it looks like this it has six full-size eyeshadows in it full-size meaning these aren't any smaller than what's in the bigger palettes and this retails for $45 so it is quite pricey it is quite prestige I think I got mine right around the $30 mark at Fame Expo because things are discounted at makeup conventions um, before I even put it on my eyes I will let you guys know I do I just kicked my vanity I do really, really like this palette a lot. I think the color range is perfect. The only thing is, I feel like it's missing a mid-toned matte. So these are mattes, these are shimmers. You get three mattes, three shimmers. I feel like you go from a nice matte highlight to like a really deep, um, like outer V color and there's no like mid-toned crease color. So I am gonna have to pull in, um, this is my Lorac Pro Matte palette you can see I've used this to death I've hit pan on three colors um, a color like latte right here for example that's kind of like in between these two colors I mean there is a nice shimmer that's in between but for your crease you want to use a matte color and I feel like this palette is missing that and then these shimmers right here so you have like this taupey beige right here I haven't really gotten a whole lot of use out of that oh my nose is running one moment please okay so I really haven't gotten a whole lot of use out of that color because I feel like it's a little bit misplaced it's the only one that's taupey the rest are definitely just like browns um, like true neutral browns that one definitely has a cool taupe undertone so I feel like it's a little bit misplaced and I don't really like use that color that much um, this middle one right here is so pretty as an all-over lid color it's just like this like beautiful like mid-toned neutral brown color with like the tiniest bit of shimmer in it it's so pretty and then this is a really really pretty highlight color um the shimmers in this palette i will let you know um they're not like your typical chunky glitter they have just like a little bit of sheen to them so here's the three colors and here is how they swatch so you can see like they're not your typical like urban decay really glittery and they're not your typical like pow in your face glittery they're a little bit more understated a little bit more subdued okay so I'm gonna actually start out with my Lorac Pro matte palette to apply that crease color so here's that color latte right there you can see it's just a really good like middle transition mid-toned brown it's neutral all of that so this is a Sigma E35 blending brush and I'm just going to apply that in my crease to kind of get us started. Um, I know I've already said this like 18 times, but I feel like this is the only color that is missing from the Busy Art eyeshadows. Okay, now I'm gonna go into this middle shimmery color with a Sigma E55 flat shader brush. I like to apply this color all over my lid. I think it's perfect for that. It's just so, so, so pretty. It's nice and subtle but still really pigmented and I think it's just pretty for like a nice kind of base color. You can see that the shimmery colors do have some fallout. So you can see that fallout right there on my cheeks. That's why I applied the bake, but the matte colors do not have a whole lot of fallout at all, which is really great. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with the Smith 230 brush. This is kind of like a pointy blender brush and this middle matte color right here. I don't know if these have names. I don't think they have names. So 
I'm just gonna refer to them by color. <laughs> That's okay with you guys. So I'm going to use this to kind of place the mat on my crease like my outer one-third, outer V crease area. And then I'm gonna go in with a different brush to blend it out. Um, I haven't quite figured out if I like or hate these Smith brushes. I think they're good, I just, I'm so used to much fluffier, much, much more fluffier blending brushes that I feel like this, I haven't, you know, I haven't got the hang of it yet. So that's okay, I'll get the hang of them. I kind of get stuck in a rut and I use the same brushes over and over again, but this is, still a really good brush. So I have it applied, you can tell it's very messy. So now I'm gonna go in with, whew, typical hot mess Melissa. Okay, this is the Morphe M517, it has a huge handle. Like, look at that handle compared to the Smith one, it's huge. So this is just like a really, really dense blender brush. I'm gonna go in, I'm not going to apply any additional product, but I'm just going to kind of fluff and blend out that brown color, drag it up to my upper crease so you can see it when my eyes are open. See how you can, it like smokes out a little bit. You can see it even when my eyes are open. So I'm gonna drag it out and I just kind of pat and blend. And I feel like this works well for me. So I like to do it this way and then I'm gonna drag it into my crease a little bit more. And I just feel like this is a really effective way to apply that outer color. So you can tell that blends super easily. I didn't have to fuss with it for very long. I really like the blendability of these shadows. They just kind of like fuse together and they just blend really, really well. Look at that. I will say, I think I put more powder on this side than I did on this side. So it looks a little bit more pigmented, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna go into the darker brown, almost black color and that same Smith brush. This time I'm gonna focus just right on this outer part, just right there. That way I have a little bit of like an ombre effect where I go from like darkest to lightest. Um, and I'm gonna go in with that same Morphe brush afterwards and blend that baby out, but not quite as high up and not quite as far in as the like more middle, middle toned brown. Now I'm gonna go in with a smudge brush. I love these types of brushes. They're like one of my all time favorites. This is the Sephora Pro Smudge number 11. And I'm gonna go into that same dark, kind of smoky, dark brown. And I'm going to apply this to my lash line, my upper lash line. I'm gonna do this instead of eyeliner. Usually I'll go in with a dark brown or even black eyeliner, but this works good too. And this makes it a little bit more subtle and appropriate for daily use. It is daytime right now, it's only 10 o'clock. And I'm gonna go to the mall with my mom and my sister. So I feel like sometimes this just makes your smoky eyeliner a little bit more wearable. Now I'm gonna go back to that Sigma E55 and I'm gonna use the like tip of it and dot it in this brown color, this middle brown color again. But this I'm gonna use for my lower. Ooh, I need to dust off my bake first. Hold on one moment, please. Okay, dust off that bake. <laughs> and then I'm gonna go in and apply this to my lower lash line. Whoops, I think I got out of the camera lens there. Okay, next on to this matte cream color, and this is a Sigma E40, nice and clean. Um, I'm gonna go into this area right between my brow and where that color ends, and blend it out a little bit, but also apply that cream color to kind of highlight. I think more or less this is just like a nice transitional color to kind of end where the other color stops, and you know, just, I don't know. I don't know, I just like to do this, okay? Okay, last step before I move on to eyeliner. So I go in with that same beauty blender that I used my to apply my bake and basically like the rest of my makeup <laughs> earlier in the day and clean up those lines a little bit right there. Nice, make it nice and sharp and just kind of clean it up a little bit. If you get a little bit of translucent powder on there, no worries, girl. Just go in. <laughs> I'm in a weird mood today and kind of dust it off a little bit. And we are done with the shadow.
For lashes, I'm using two new products. These are the Ardell Studio Effects lashes. They're like layered, you can see. Can't see, it's too bright. But it's like a strip of lashes and then another strip on top of them, which I think is pretty cool. And then I had to get some new lash glue because my old lash glue was just like, it was bad. So this is the Ardell Lash Glip in the clear. I've noticed that I think I like clear glue better than black glue. I used to use black glue, but if you mess up with black glue, and I mess up a lot, um, then it's really hard to fix and it kind of messes up your eyeshadow. Whereas clear glue, although it's white, it dries clear and then you can't even see it. So I'm going to apply these. These are so pretty. Look at them. Okay, now let's bronze up this pasty face. Oh my gosh, I look so stinking pasty. Okay, so for bronzer, of course, my Holy Grail Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil and my Marc Jacobs The Bronze Bronzing Brush. It is summertime and I am still super pasty. <laughs> and the thing is, like, I can get sorta kinda tan. I mean, look at my arms are, I mean, they're by no means tan, but they're colored. And my face just just doesn't like to tan. Probably because I usually put SPF on my face, which isn't a bad thing, but anyways, yes, I need to bronze up my face. For contour, I still haven't decided if I love or hate this palette, so I'm gonna use it a little bit more. I'm gonna use this big fluffy brush from Tarte, the con Tarte contour brush, and um, this lighter contour color. And this is really hard to get in there because the pans are really small. This seems to be a little bit like chalky on me or like patchy, not chalky, patchy is a better word. Like I feel like it's kind of hard to blend out. Okay, I didn't get a whole lot on the brush apparently. It is really pigmented, there we go. There is a lot. In fact, that might be a little bit too much. I'm gonna dot some on this side. There we go. Um, but I feel like, and maybe it was just the brush I was using, but I feel like it's kind of hard to blend out. So, we shall see. It does have a nice, like, scent to it, <laughs> which is really weird. For blush, I have been in love with the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blush in the color Seduce. It's like, it's like exposed, but a little bit more kind of, like, red or pinky, like, kind of like mauve kind of like a brick, dusty mauve. <laughs> It's a weird explanation, but I really, really like it. I feel like this whole look is kind of on the neutral side. I could have gone for like a really, really fun blush, but I just feel like this whole look is kind of more neutral. So I wanted to stick with the nude blush, but I really like how this has a little bit of that like pinkish red. Oh, I love it. I love how this video was supposed to be an eye tutorial. <laughs> And it turned into a full face tutorial, and I think I'm going to do my hair also. So for highlighter, I'm using the Tarte um, Exposed Highlighter. I used this in my last, in one of my last tutorials, and I really, really like it. You do have to build it up a little bit, um, but I kind of like that because then if I don't want a crazy in-your-face highlighter, I can just do like one layer, and it's like a subtle kind of going-to-work highlighter. Or, if I have a day like today, I can just layer it up. And although it takes a little bit longer, you can get that like pow, pow. For lips, I'm gonna use the Bite Beauty lipstick in the color Bourvray, V-O-U-V-R-A-Y. I don't know, this is a little bit more pinky, but it's like a pinky nude. Ooh, I like that. And then to top it off with some gloss, I'm gonna use the Marc Jacobs Pretty Thing. All right guys, here is the full finished face and hair actually. I do highly recommend the Viseart palette. It is a nice all-in-one kind of palette. I mean, I guess if you went in with a light hand on this mid-toned brown, you could get a nice light like, crease color, but if you have other palettes, and more importantly, if you have the big Viseart palette, you definitely do not need this. It is pricey. $45 for six shadows is like, ugh, that's a lot of money. So 
I do recommend it. I do think it's a great palette. I do not plan on stopping using it anytime soon. I think it's great. But I don't think it's like a drop everything, run out and get it, you need this in your life type of palette, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's my thoughts, that's my tutorial. Let me know that you like this video by giving it a big thumbs up and or leaving a comment down below. And I think that's about it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.